Hey guys, in this particular video I'll be showing you a very simple friction problem um, just to get you used to it. Even though in an exam you won't get something as simple as this, this is a good way to start. So let's get started. Um, let's say we've got a floor like this which does have friction on it and on that floor we've got this random box. And let's say we wanted to try and apply an external force to this box by say pulling it this way with the force P and let's say we wanted to draw a free body diagram on it. Well, the free body diagram would look something like this. It will have a force P acting on it. We'll also have a force due to gravity, mg, if the block weighs a mass m. We also have a normal force acting on it as well, n. But assuming that the floor isn't frictionless, in other words, we are accounting for the, for the friction, then we're going to have a friction force which is trying to um, repel motion, so it's going to be acting in the opposite direction. So this will be our friction force right here, and it's going to be acting to the left. Before I get into the analysis of it, let's also create an axis. So let's let's choose this to be our axis right here. Let's choose x to be in the horizontal direction and y to be in the vertical direction. Not a big surprise. And let's get into the math now. Well, we know two really important formulas which are going to come into play. We know that the sum of forces. Let me make that a little bit neater. The sum. The sum of forces in our y direction is going to be equal to the mass of our block times the acceleration in our y direction. That's one important formula. Another one is the sum of forces in our x direction is going to be equal to our mass of our block times the acceleration in our x direction as well. These are two hugely important formulas. Okay, well, let's first analyze this one. Well, what are our forces in our y direction? Well, we've got we've got n in our positive y direction and then minus mg because mg is acting downwards and that's going to be equal to m a y what about f what about this one that'll just be well what's our positive what what are the forces acting in the positive x direction it's going to be p see cuz p is acting in the positive x direction and then it's going to be subtracted from our friction force which I'll just call ff and that's going to be equal to your mass of your block times your acceleration in your x direction. Okay, well, even if the block is sliding along the path, um, the the acceleration in your y direction is always going to be equal to zero. So this is a fairly this is a this is a gimme right here. A y is always going to be equal to zero. Even if the block is accelerating the x direction, the block will be stuck to the ground at all times. So we know A y is going to be equal to zero, meaning that n is going to be equal to mg. This is necessary. So that's going to be a huge part to play in the future. What about um, this? Well, right now, we the block could be accelerating the x direction. We don't know. But for now, let's consider the case. Let's just consider the case where it isn't. Let's consider consider a to the x, a x, a subscript x is equal to zero. We don't know if that's the case. We're going to prove it soon. But for now, let's consider what would happen if that is the case. Well, if that is the case, let me scroll down. That would imply that p minus f f is equal to zero, right? Let's just bring that down there, right? Which would also imply that p is equal to your friction force if you bring the friction force over to the right hand side. Okay, well, th and this is the tricky part. This is the bit which really uses your intuition most of all. Um, if the friction force is the required to um, keep this acceleration zero is greater than the maximum friction force, then the block will move. So let me write that down. If, if our friction force, FF, is greater than the maximum friction force it can have, so... FF max, then, then the block block will move. That's why we let a. That's why we chose to consider a subscript x equals zero because we wanted to see if the friction force required to keep it still would be greater than the maximum friction force or not. If it is greater, then it'll move. If it's not greater, it'll stay where it is, or potentially move to the left. But that's not a that's not a possibility in this problem. Okay, well let's consider that. So if ff is greater than f max, then it will move. So let's just sub ff into this equation right here. So basically, we can write if p is greater than ff max, then the block will move 
to the right. So I'll just put block right. I'm sorry, I spelled block. How embarrassing. All right, then the block will move to the right. Okay, well, what's well, what's 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 the maximum friction force? We determined in the last video that experimentally, the maximum friction force any object can have is equal to your static coefficient of friction times by the normal force, right? So I know I'm just darting all around the page, but basically we can now write that P must be greater than mu s n in order for the block to move to the right. If it's not the case, then the block isn't moving to the right, right? Okay, so now now this is this now it comes to the point of just subbing in values at this point. So let's say hypothetically Let's say hypothetically that P, the force we're applying to the block was say 10 newtons, right? And let's say also that um, our mass was, let's say, I don't know, um, 20 newtons. Now let's, let's make it, let's make it uh, 30 kilograms, right? Um, well, how do we determine whether the block's gonna move? Well, P is gonna be greater than mu s n, and we discussed earlier that n is just um, mg, right? So mu s mg, is p greater than mu s mg? Well, we need to know mu s, and let's just say for the case, sake of simplicity that mu s, mu s is equal to 0 0.5, right? It's a unitless, unitless measurement. So let's see if this is the case. If this is the case, then 10 will be greater than 0 0.5 times by 30 times by 9.8, right? Is this the case? Well, this is 10. What about this? Well, that's going to be 15 times by 9.8, which is approximately, which is approximately 150. 10 is definitely not greater than 150, right? So basically, the block will not move to the right in this case. But you can just play around with values to figure out what would be the case for the block to move to the right. All right, guys, that's a fairly simple example. And the next few examples, I'm going to cover something a lot more complicated.